Greetings survivors and friends, Shadow Frax here and today I have for you a full breakdown of everything you need to know about Rust's new official map coming in with August's Forced Wipe. But before we start, a big thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Everything you see here is filmed using my new 3080. Fantastic card it is. If you've been watching my update vids, you'll know recently Rust added support for NVIDIA Reflex, which reduces system latency by up to 38%, turning your clicks into actions a lot sooner. And as we all know, that's a good thing. NVIDIA Reflex is available for use on GeForce 900 series GPUs and above, and if you're interested in taking advantage of it, just follow the link in the description. Okay, as you may or may not be aware, back in May's Rust community blog, Face Punch kicked off a map-making competition, and this was the first time the community have actually been trusted with making a custom map for use on official servers. There were some definite rules. It had to be around 3.5k in size, had to use keycard progression, and needed to feel like it could be a continuation of the official Rust world. So no fantasy shenanigans, floating islands, or rock formations shaped like a giant ninja turtle. Things like that. After a total of 24 submissions and much chin scratching, the winners have just been announced, and I'm going to give you a full tour and breakdown of the new map now ahead of its launch in next month's Forced Wipe, so you can plan out your strat in advance. Oh, and a quick look at the runner-up, why not? So, here is the winning entry. Gravis Island, which sadly doesn't mean anything in Turkish, but is the brainchild of a well-known team in the mapping community. So big congrats to Lone, who is Mike Jones, Collapsed Orange, and Knox. In fact, you may have seen some of their handiwork on this channel before, including the Mars map that I showcased a few months back. Some of the reasons why it rose to the top of the pile, according to Face Punch, included its overall level of polish, balance, and performance, the unique terrain, and the way it elevated the Rust world by adding many custom points of interest, along with tweaks and extensions to existing monuments, and I can see why it was picked. If I had to describe it in one word, I'd say tasteful. No, no, that's not a word that's usually uttered in the same sentence as Rust, but there you go. So to begin, looking at things from the air, the tier progression begins in the southwest and rolls over to the northeast, with everything connected by a road network that goes around and under the island. Starting at the top of tier 0, you've got a standard Oxum's garage, and just nearby at H9, one of two custom water pump stations, with a bit of loot, but you can't drink the water here. It probably comes straight from Face Punch's toilet. Also nearby is the Bandit Camp, which is as standard, but with many trails connecting it to the nearby roads. Down at the beach you'll find a fishing village, with just out to sea near it a custom offshore monument at B11. Now this is designed to be the equivalent of a mining outpost or a garage, but wet, with an amount of loot to be had, and most importantly a recycler. There are two of these monuments in all, and they were added with the upcoming submarine update in mind. South along the coast you'll find a lighthouse, and the decision was to attach it and the two others on this map directly to the shore to encourage players to visit more often. Also, you'll notice a custom crashed chopper junk pile nearby. There's a well mini monument here at G15, which isn't quite as mini as usual, as it's been extended to include some loot spawns, areas of cover, and a repair bench. There's a stone quarry at E16, and at G13, I think I found what they were quarrying stone for, a small henge monument surrounded by rock formations which looks like it has something of a backstory. No loot here though, grave robbers have long since been and nicked it. There's a junkyard at H17, and although it's your standard model, something worth mentioning is how this and all the other monuments are actually properly connected up to the power lines, which is one of those small attention to detail things that nevertheless does drive me mad sometimes. Oh, and there are stop signs at all the intersections because safety first. On the other side of a mountain to this at K14, there's a standard sphere tank, and just nearby a sperm kit, which you'll notice has a few small changes to the exterior. There's an awning at the front, plus a couple of extra cover points. The power plant is over this side of the island too, at L19, along with a nearby mining outpost, and I just want to mention the terrain here. This side of the island has some quite extensive beach areas, including a big stretch of shallow water at this point, so expect compounds to spring up here. At the back of this is also a large secluded island, if that's the sort of thing you're after, although you will be quite close to the spawn area here. None of the terrain was procedurally made, as I say, and so cliff placement is also custom and you'll notice this especially around some of the roads to make them feel like they're cut into the landscape. 
In the south, near the power plant, there's another fishing village, and nearby at 022, another offshore monument like the last, again including a recycler. A buoy floating in the water near another small secluded island in the bay here hides a secret. Apart from being something to stand on, if I remove the water layer, you can see that below it's actually marking a dive site with a few crates to salvage. This was another thing done with the underwater update in mind, and there's actually another unmarked dive site not a million miles from here, but you know what? I think I'll let you discover it for yourself. Maybe in a submarine, who knows. A river marks the boundary between this and the next tier, and as it winds its way you'll find it bridged by a couple of bridges. One's a covered road crossing with some hidden surprises underneath, although now you know about them, and at the head of the river is an area that I think will end up being very popular, a large freshwater lake that not only looks great but has floating junk piles and can be built in. It's close to the sphere tank, but there's also a stables right next door, and the outpost is just up the hill, which turns out to be pretty much bang central to the map. A little to the north of the lake you'll find the airfield at K8, which although it hasn't been changed in itself, is connected on both ends to the ring road so you can drive straight through. You'll also notice here, and at other high PvP areas, a lot of extra cover in the way of rock formations has been added around them. If you drive through here, on the other side you'll pass another lake and this car, which is a custom loot spawn point, before coming to a tunnel which goes straight through the mountain to the next tier area and launch site, but more on that in a moment. Back at the other side of the airfield you'll find the entrance to a larger set of road tunnels at H8, and travelling down this a short way brings you to an intersection where you'll find the entrance to a small two-storey bunker complex. At the bottom here you'll find a number of rooms with loot and a green keycard, and on the second floor there's an emergency exit to the outside via a very long ladder leading right up to the top of the mountain. Here you'll find a small communication station equipped with a CCTV camera called Emergency Exit if you want to tune into it. Diving back into the tunnels, you can either turn west to the water treatment plant or north to the sewer branch. Either way, you'll pass by a couple more custom loot spawns consisting of broken down vehicles. Let's go west, and here you'll find yourself in the cold biome. Like the airfield, the road here runs straight through the water treatment plant at E6, which is flanked on either side by two ice lakes. Moving around the mountain to the north, you'll find a high qual quarry, another sperm kit, and the sewer branch at I2, and here some extra care has been taken again to carve the road leading up to it through the terrain to make it look natural. It's also on this side of the island that you'll find the large oil rig. Switching over to the southern side of the tier 1 area now, and the road from the outpost in the center winds down to a junction where you'll find another custom monument, a water tower with a loot spawn underneath. Following the road to your right will bring you to the train yard at R13, which has been enhanced slightly thanks to the addition of a rail bridge at the western end, but not really one that you'd want to travel on. It is very handy for hiding under though, as are most bridges, and no, before you ask, you can't build on it. On the other side of the train yard, the road passes by another custom monument, the Pawn Shop, where you'll find a recycler, phone box, areas of cover on the roof, and some loot, but sadly the items on the shelves are just display models. There are also two CCTV cameras here called Pawn 1 and Pawn 2, just in case you want to keep an eye on things. After this you'll come to the only harbour on the map which has had a bit of an enhancement with a new unloading bay on its western end. This is part of the effort to make areas such as this a bit more attractive to visit, so you'll find some extra loot here and a recycler. I do like how this looks and I think it gels very nicely with the rest of the harbour. There are also a few small very secluded islands just off the coast of this point if that's your thing. Stepping over from here into the top tier and desert biome you'll find lighthouse number two at the southeastern end again directly on the beach. Moving north on the road you'll pass another Oxum's garage and at the next intersection a second variation of the custom water pumping station at S10, this time in better condition. Still wouldn't use the water here though, unless you want to make a floater coffee. Travelling up the hill from here will take you to the satellite dishes at W9, which as a monument remains unchanged, although it is connected to the underground rail network here via a bunker entrance, and yes, this map does have a full underground system, although it isn't customised in any particular way apart from the placement of connections to the overworld. The satellite dishes are at a dead end, but heading back along the road to the north will either let you turn off to launch, which is situated north 
North Central on the map, or carry straight on to a custom cobalt checkpoint monument at S8, complete with scientists. At the entrance there's a climbable guard tower, a radio mast with a small amount of loot, and a well. Then behind this, a warehouse with a recycler, and some more loot spawns. This monument also looks rather nice at night. Beyond the checkpoint is another tunnel through the mountain that, when it reaches the other side, turns into a bridge. You may remember I showed some images of bridges that were being modelled just over a year ago, but the mapper said they wanted people to be able to experience that sort of thing now. Yeah, the wonder of bridges. What a time to be alive. Just the other side of the bridge you'll find the military tunnels. Underneath, these are as standard, but there are a couple of extra touches, such as this continuation of the train tracks across the road. Also, just off the road here is something for people who like shortcuts to the sleeping bag. I vote for more ramps, although this one doesn't come with a guarantee of a soft landing. There's the entrance to a large cave system at the bottom of the hill, and from here, just off the coast to the northeast of the island, you'll spot the small oil rig. Carrying on around the coast to the north, you'll find another fishing village, mining outpost, and a third lighthouse. And if you're observant, you might spot the remnants of a mini-game here on the island at P1, which I wouldn't actually mind seeing one day. Perhaps if they do a pub games DLC or something. There are a total of five cave systems on the map, but as everything is hand placed, some of them might be slightly less obvious than normal. I'll pop the map refs for them in the description for you though, in case you don't mind spoilers. What do I think about Gravis? It's subtle, but in a good way. There are one or two slightly humorous monuments, but nothing that nukes the fridge, and from what I can see, I think it'll be well received. Personally, what I like most about this map is the terrain, with some natural feeling valleys and lake placements, and there are some great building spots with a couple of extremely tempting bowl-like valleys to plant a base in, and I'll also pop some map images in my Discord if you want to study the landscape in more detail, link will be in the description. Gravis Island will be running on Facepunch EU Smalls 1, 3 and 6, and US Smalls 1 and 3 from August the 5th, and will be there for a couple of months, I believe. It also looks like there will be future competitions, perhaps moving up to some larger maps, so stay tuned. As I say, there was a runner-up as well, and that map was Kakatua by Firecrow, so well done to them. I believe that means cockatoo in Spanish. This one is a bit more fantastical in places and has some interesting monuments and points of interest. Of course, it's not going to be used on officials, but that doesn't mean it'll go to waste. I don't know what Firecrow's plans are for it, but if I find anything out, I'll put it in the description for you. Let me know what you think to Gravis Island in the comments and whether you might give it a go. I know a lot of you are missing Happis right now, so this might just scratch that particular itch until it returns. Once again, Thank you to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Make sure if you've got a GeForce 900 series GPU or above that you click on the link in the description and check out NVIDIA Reflex. You never know, that reduced latency could end up making the difference between a one-way trip to Respawn City and the best loot of your life. Leave a like, sub to the channel for more Rust news and survival stuff, follow me on Twitch for streams, Twitter, Facebook, Discord and my Steam group to stay up to date with my content and support the channel directly through Patreon or my merch store. Links below, I shall catch you all soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. This video is powered by AWDIT's producer range of workstation PCs, available now at awdit.co.uk. Probably comes straight from Facepunch's toilet.